And so we were worried entering Gaza that maybe people wouldn't immediately get it or, or might have dismissed us coming to invade their private lives and ask them about how lentils are made or whatever. But we were shocked to find that people immediately got it and were so enthusiastic and they immediately understood that it wasn't just about food, it was about so much more. Uh, it was about their identity and their connection to the land and the food as a narrative device and on and on and on. I am a very entrepreneurial person. Uh, when this was passed in the state of Washington, it was kind of a no-brainer for me. I knew it would be very interesting, I knew it would be exciting, and I knew there were, honestly, there were going to be a lot of people that were going to shy away from it just because of the stigma that it currently had. But in the early going, uh, it gave me a, a jump start on a lot of people because uh, I've always been that type of personality where I really don't care. Uh, if the state wants to issue me a license on it and it's legal, then, then that's good enough for me. We didn't set out to create a backyard like this. We've just slowly, over the years, I've just added more and more. But our hope was to become a little bit more self-reliant, to grow more of our own food, to sort of lessen our impact sort of on the global food system. This house is sort of the central core, if you think in terms of permaculture zones. Things you eat every day, like the berries as you walk by and the small tomatoes, they need to be right next to your house. Your fruit crops can be further away. 